Asynchronous Time Warp is now available on the Steam VR Beta. Now, before we get into uh, our experience with it and how well it works with Steam VR, I'm going to tell you quickly how you can activate it by getting into the Steam VR Beta because some people seem a little bit confused and it is a little bit hidden away. So, if you want to get into it, first, what you need to do is load up your Steam, then go to your library, then go to Tools, of course, and look through your tools and you'll see a, a tool called Steam VR. You want to right click on that, click properties and then you need to go to betas and then from the drop down list select beta dash Steam VR beta update. After doing that it should download the uh, juicy files then you can uh, restart Steam and you'll be up and running with the Steam VR beta. Going into the settings page, you should now see two incredibly sexy and arousing options. Allow asynchronous reprojection and allow interleaved reprojection. By default, both boxes are ticked, which is rather strange because from our testing, we found that you really either want one or t'other ticked, depending on the situation. Having allow asynchronous reprojection ticked seemed to be ideal for those situations where you pretty much always get 90 FPS, but very occasionally you drop from 90 to say 75 or, or maybe 60 on a very rare occasion. But for the most part, you're hitting 90, your computer's happy, uh, but you, you get those little drops that previously would cause stutter and would drive you absolutely crazy because not only would it cause stutter, it would drop to the reprojection 45 FPS, take a minute or so and then go back to the 90, which was even worse than just having it always be on 45 often. So having allow asynchronous reprojection on is ideal if you've basically set your computer up perfectly for VR, but occasionally you get a little bit of drops. And this, this setting completely fixes those annoying bits of stutter I used to get in iRacing, um, Euro Truck Simulator, Seto Corso, or any game where you just get those occasional drops for whatever reason. Your computer's downloading pornography in the background. I don't know. You get those occasional drops and they drive you crazy. All gone. Absolutely fantastic. My mind is blown. Now, the allow interleave reprojection is, of course, just the standard uh, cut to 45 FPS. This setting I would use if your computer is a veritable potato that's just been plucked from the fields. It will let you play things in virtual reality and it will probably reduce nausea, but of course you will have all the stutter there and just the feeling that you're playing on a games console but in virtual reality. It's the sort of last resort option that lets you play games in VR with your potato machine. Ultimately, they won't bail you out if your computer's terrible and they're just there to help you along and sort of get you back up to that ideal 90 FPS. They're kind of like the antidote to a snake bite. If you go on holiday in Australia and you're bitten by a snake, you can take some uh, anti-venom and uh, you'll probably get away with your life. On the other hand, if you hold the snake against your jugular, tickling it, getting it to bite you repeatedly, no matter how much anti-venom you take, you're not going to have a good time. Other than the asynchronous time warp, uh, a couple of nice things that have been introduced. I've found that the, uh, the the general performance of Steam VR, underlying Steam VR, is faster. So when you go to a game and uh, it's it's loading up from one thing to another thing, and Steam then decides to display your this sort of Steam VR interface to stop you getting motion sick from the loading, that's a lot more responsive to snapping. There's far fewer moments where you get that stutter between loading into something or changing scene. Those of you familiar with VR will know what I'm talking about. Another nice change is the introduction of two separate render to pixel multipliers. So a lot of us are running at 1.5 to get the uh, clarity up in various titles that don't have um, super sampling options. But what that did do was also apply that to the Steam VR interface. Now, by adding this code to your config file, you can separately add a multiplier to your Steam VR interface. So you can decrease that down if you get performance issues or just have it at the same amount so that uh, desktop and, and apps in the uh, Steam VR interface still look crisp. But at least it's there as an option that might improve performance for people with slower computers, which is a really nice addition. 
And uh, don't worry, because uh, chaperone switcher, which I know a lot of us are using to quickly change from different chaperone uh, spaces and render to pixel values, that all still works as it did previously. So you can keep on using that if you were. So in, in conclusion, the uh, latest SteamVR beta is a must go to. Uh, the only downside with it, I would say, is there do seem to be the occasional stability issues. I've noticed some crashes where I didn't have them before, but it's a beta and I'm sure those kind of things will be ironed out. Um, all in all, it absolutely transforms SteamVR, especially for those of us that are playing games that originally weren't designed for VR, such as driving or flight simulators, where you struggle sometimes to get the perfect 90 FPS or you get the occasional spike and drop in frame rate. Also, I think it will really help people on slower, slower systems, say people running 970s or 960s that can just about play some of the VR titles, generally without problem, but would get stutter or maybe they want to run a slightly higher settings. It should really help those type of players as well. It won't help people that are playing on absolute potatoes. In, at the end of the day, you can't completely fall back on, on these things. As I say, they're there to help you along. They're not there to completely prop up virtual reality. And I can understand why Valve have been reluctant to, uh, to have this sort of thing uh, early on. And I, I would have thought that Valve have had this um, these features for a while now. They were just sort of reluctant to put them in there but i think it's good that they are there now for the reasons said before so there you go don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button if you found this useful please like the video as well don't forget to check out our previous video where we show off the uh, the, the thin six millimeter vr cover absolutely amazing as well it's been like christmas we've had this asynchronous time warp this thin vr cover and a whole bunch of vr titles come out uh, and all, all of them have really improved uh, my enjoyment of VR. Until the next video, thanks for watching and um, goodbye.